हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज अशोक दिस वीडियो इज द पार्ट ऑफ एपेक्स ट्रिगर्स इंटरव्यू प्रिपरेशन सीरीज वेर इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव कवर्ड इंट्रोडक्शन रिलेटेड टॉपिक्स लाइक व्हाट आर एपेक्स ट्रिगर्स वेर एंड हाउ टू क्रिएट देम हाउ मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रिगर्स वी हैव इन एपेक्स वट आर ट्रिगर इवेंट्स एंड कंटेक्स वेरिएबल्स एंड वेन वी शुड यूज ट्रिगर्स सो इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच माई प्रीवियस वीडियो और वॉन्ट टू लर्न दीज टॉपिक्स देन यू कैन फाइंड लिंक इन डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड वॉच दैट वीडियो and today in this video we will see what all best practices we should follow while writing apex triggers and before moving further first let's see why we should follow or why it is important to follow best practices in apex triggers so the first reason we have governor limit management well we all know that salesforce runs on multi tenant environment which means multiple instances will be created on same server or we can see multiple customers can have their orgs on same server so to avoid resource monopolization or to ensure fair resource allocation between all the orgs salesforce has lots of governor limits like cpu time heap size soql dml and many others so implementing the best practices help us to stay within these limits for example if we will bulkify our code then it will help us to reduce the number of database operations so we can minimize the risk of hitting limits on dml statements or soql queries and by implementing best practices we can make our trigger maintainable and scalable i mean best practices help us in writing clean well organized and readable code so due to this it is easier for other developers to understand trigger logics and also simpler to identify and fix bugs or add new functionality as well and by following best practices we can increase performance of our application like writing bulkified code and limiting the number of triggers per object can help us to reduce execution time of trigger so overall performance will be very good in front of user okay and there are many other advantages we have by following best practices so we should always follow best practices while writing apex triggers okay and now let's see what all best practices we have and discuss them one by one so first we have one trigger per object which means we should always try to create only one trigger on your object not more than that and why this is recommended and part of best practices so the first reason is execution order is not guaranteed it means you know as we have discussed in order of execution video that if you have multiple triggers on same object then at run time we can't control their execution order for example let's say on account object we have two triggers trigger 1 and trigger 2 and now whenever we will perform any dml operations on account object then at run time we don't know which trigger will execute first like trigger 1 or trigger 2 right so this may cause many problems like inconsistent logic execution and logic dependency i mean maybe we have written some piece of code in trigger 1 that should be executed first and the code which we have written in trigger 2 that should execute later but due to random execution that execution order cannot be controlled right and also if we have multiple triggers on same object then there might be a chance that we need to write same piece of code multiple times and that will consume more governor limits right so if we'll create multiple triggers on a object then we might face many problems but if we are creating only one trigger per object then that will give us lots of advantages like our trigger code will be more organized and readable and we can achieve code reusability and also in our code we can define execution order because now we will write all the logics in same trigger so we can write code in such a way so that will execute in a specific order and obviously performance will be better okay and now next best practice is we should always write bulkified triggers bulkified means instead of processing records individually we should write code in such a way so multiple records can be processed at a time and you know triggers are by default bulkified in nature i mean when we perform dml operations on multiple records let's say we are inserting 500 account records then our trigger will get called three times or we can say in three batches why because our trigger can process 200 records at a time so while writing code in trigger we should always need to consider this and let's understand this best practice with a use case and the use case is let's say we have a requirement in which we need to make sure that minimum annual revenue of an account should be 10000 usd though this requirement can be achieved through record trigger flow as well but in this video we will implement this in triggers for our learning purpose so let's open our developer console and here open account trigger which we have created in last video 
and if you don't have trigger created then simply click on file then new then apex triggers and here provide trigger name and select account as object okay now here what we want to do we want to make sure that annual revenue should be minimum 10,000 USD which means while inserting or updating account we have to check that if annual revenue field value is less than 10,000 then we have to assign 10,000 there okay so first let me write code then I will explain it to you okay so first here we are checking that annual revenue is null or less than 10,000 if yes then we are assigning 10,000 in annual revenue so it will always update annual revenue field to 10,000 if we have value null or less than 10,000 right and we have written this code in before context I mean in before insert why because in trigger if you want to update current record due to that this trigger get called then we have to write code in only before context not in after in after this is not allowed okay now let's write the same code in before update as well and now to test it let's open any account record and update annual revenue field to less than 10,000 like let's say 500 and click on save all right now after record save you can notice we have 10,000 in annual revenue field which means our trigger is working fine but do you think this is really fine or this code will cover all the scenarios then answer will be no this is not fine and to understand why this is not fine let's test this code with the multiple records so let's open execute anonymous window and try to create multiple account records here in single transaction okay so here i have declared a list and added two account objects with name demo account one and account two and also added insert keyword before this so it will insert these two account records in single transaction so now let's click on execute code is executed successfully now let's refresh our accounts list now here you can see accounts which we have recently added and you know we have not provided any value in annual revenue field so let's see what we have in these accounts so in demo account 1 we have 10,000 as annual revenue and in demo account 2 we don't have anything here why because we have not written this code in bulkified way like here we are checking and updating annual revenue for only zeroth index I mean this trigger.new is a list variable which can have multiple records but here we are only checking and updating for first record right and now let's convert this same code into bulkified way all right so here what we have done now here we are iterating each account record using for loop and checking and updating annual revenue field for each account okay so now let's test it again and here change the account names account 3 and account 4 and click on execute And now here we can see value in account 3 and in account 4 as well all right which means now we can see annual revenue value in both accounts so this is how we can write code in bulkified way to process multiple records at a time and now let's see next best practice which is avoid SQL queries or DML statements inside loops so you know in Salesforce we have per transaction governor limits like in single transaction we can only execute 100 SQL queries and 150 DML operations so we should write SQL queries or DML statements outside of loops whenever possible 
so it will save you by hitting governor limits easily and we will see a lot in coming videos like how we can follow this best practice with practical scenarios okay and now let's move on the next best practice that is logic less triggers so logic less means we should not write full logics inside trigger instead of that we should have our logics in different trigger helper class or we can use any trigger design pattern as well we will discuss about different trigger design patterns in a separate video but as of now if you don't know much about trigger design patterns then you can simply go with the trigger helper classes as well so let's practically see how to create and use trigger helper classes and helper classes just like a normal class so we can create it from here like from file then new apex class and generally we provide helper class name same as trigger by adding helper so here let me provide class name account trigger helper okay now here we can write different methods as required and call them in trigger so as of now we have written one logic here directly in trigger to check and save minimal annual revenue and to implement logic less triggers best practice let's move this logic into helper class so here let's create a method to get minimum annual revenue and call in trigger So here we have created a method which has name update minimum annual revenue and we are taking account list as an input parameter and here we have used same logic which we had in our trigger okay and now let's call this method in trigger. Okay so we have removed that logic from trigger and called helper class method and you know this method is static so we don't need to create object here like we can directly call static methods with class name and we have passed trigger.new as input parameter right and also call the same method in before update as well okay so you can see there are lots of advantages we have if we have used this best practice like now trigger code is clean and easily readable and also we have removed code redundancy and increased code reusability by calling the same method in multiple context like here we are calling the same method in before insert and in before update as well and remove duplicate logic right so this is why we should use trigger framework or trigger helper classes to make our triggers logicless now next we have avoid hard coding ids so sometimes when working in triggers we need to perform some logics on the basis of a specific user profile permission set or any record so in that case what we generally do we used to hold that record id in variable like this here we are storing a specific user id in variable and assigned as opportunity owner but is it a good approach no it is not and why this is not a good approach so there are a couple of reasons we have and first is record ids vary in orgs which means the auto generated record id will be different in another org for example let's say you want to add some conditions on the basis of system administrator profile and you have used that profile id in your dev instance but when you will deploy this code to another org or on production then there you will have different id for system administrator profile so whatever logics you have written for that record id that will not work in another environment and second reason we have redeployment is required if need to change any hard code value in production so you know in production salesforce doesn't allow us to update apex classes or triggers and if you require any change in production apex code then you have to make changes on sandboxes and deploy on production again so this is not a good practice to have hard coded values or ids in triggers and now to avoid this problem what we can do we can use custom metadata types and settings to make our trigger configurable i mean custom metadata and settings can be updated from admin configurations so if we have used these in our triggers and if change is required in production then we can go into salesforce setup and change the value and if you want a practical video on this then do let me know in the comments we'll create a separate video with a use case okay and now next we have avoid recursive triggers recursion is the very common and dangerous problem with the apex triggers so while writing apex trigger we should always keep this problem in mind and include a better approach to avoid this 
and how we can avoid this problem that I have explained in a separate video with multiple approaches. So you can refer that video and I will give link in description. And still you want me to create another video with a practical use case then do let me know in the comments. Okay. And now next we have avoid long running operations. So you know triggers always executing synchronously within the database transaction which means that any long running operation will delay the completion of the transaction and this can lead to increased response time for the user and create performance issues and also you might face request timeout issues especially when dealing with large volume of data or complex operations so better if we can transfer those logics or operations from trigger to asynchronous processes such as future methods or base classes because asynchronous processes execute in different thread so our current thread will not take much time to complete so performance will be very good and also we will get large set of governor limits in asynchronous effects so if you have any long running operation and output of that operation is not required in the current thread then we should always go with the asynchronous effects okay and now next we have avoid calling base from trigger so calling base classes directly from trigger is generally not recommended and the reason behind this is less governor limits i mean in a org we can have only five active batches at a time and if we have enabled apex flex queue then we can hold 100 more base jobs and you know triggers get called much frequently as per user requests so if we will submit base job from trigger then limits can be easily reached right so that's why this is not recommended to call batch classes from triggers instead we can go with the scheduled base job okay so i think that's it in this video where we have covered best practices which we need to follow while writing apex triggers and if this video helped you to learn something new then please like and subscribe my youtube channel and also share this with your friends and colleagues and if you have any questions or suggestions for me then do let me know in the comments and from next video you will start writing triggers on a huge case thank you so much for watching i will see you in next video